out where they say, let us be gay. I'm going Hollywood. I'll ballyhoo. Greetings to you. I'm going Hollywood. Hey, while you sleepy hands are in that hay, I'll be dancing. I'm going to be dancing with a sun-kissed baby, and I'm on my way. Here's my beret. I'm going Hollywood. Hi, I'm David Duncan, and welcome to Bing Crosby, The Hollywood Years. Well, in this series, I want to look at Bing's tremendous success as an actor that saw him star in more than 50 films over a 40-year period. For five of those years, he was the number one box office draw in the United States. He won the Best Actor Oscar in 1945 and was nominated another two times. His films also featured more hit songs than any other performer, composed by the best songwriters of the first half of the 20th century. So the year is 1933 and Bing is still basking in the glow of success from his first starring role in a feature film, The Big Broadcast. Looking good. Say, I'm taking a death you come out to be in that big picture. Mm, you mean a big broadcast? Yeah, slight plug. Yeah, got it then. College Humor is the title of his first film under his new contract with Paramount Pictures, and he's teamed up with Jack Oakey, Richard Arlen, and Mary Carlyle for this light-hearted film about college life where he plays a professor of drama. Now there's not too much of a plot and the fact that Bing sings to his class shows that it's not meant to be taken all too seriously. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, Mr. Andrews. Thank you. Just an echo. Ooh. In the valley. But it brings back sweet memories of you. Please be seated. Mostly, the story follows the antics of Jack Oakey as a freshman who navigates his way around campus, quickly hooking up with a pretty blonde and getting chosen to play on the college football team. And down the old road, in the magic of the moon. You are thrilled with delight While the leaves that flutter o'er you Whisper lover tonight Why keep waiting and debating When you know it's time for mating On the old Fox Road Bing is seduced by Jack Oakey's sister, played by Mary Carlyle, who was playing her first main role in a feature film. Here's Bing reminiscing about his experience. Uh, during the Raccoon Coat Stutz Bearcat era, I, I did a picture called College Humor. The score was by Arthur Johnson and Sam Coslow. Jack Oakey and Dick Arlen played in the backfield, and I was a professor of music. I never did know what the story was all about. Mary Carlyle sat in the front row in all my classes, and. I guess that sort of threw me off. I... Oh, don't get excited. It's just part of the Omicron initiation. Well, I know, but I... Oh, don't be that way. You love it. Going my way? Uh, huh? Well, uh, which way is that? Omicron house. Well, no, uh, not exactly. I, I had an appointment. You see, I've got to... Uh, well, I, I can't. Mary stated, years later in an interview, that Bing was wonderful to work with. However, not long into filming, he'd just announced that he was to become a father, which was to be his first son, Gary, born later that year. Richard Arlen, who played another of the main roles in the film, also announced that he too was to become a first-time father. So he and Bing went out on the town to celebrate. The following morning, Bing failed to appear on set for a big production number and it wasn't until a few hours later that he arrived looking a little bit worse for wear. 
However, Mary recalled that he was so apologetic that no one could get mad at him. She also recalled that it was standard practice in those early years for Bing to have his ears glued back, and every now and then while filming, an ear would suddenly pop out, which became a constant cause of frustration. Jack Oakey, however, remembered that many a time when he or Richard Arlen wanted to get off work early, they just flicked one of Bing's ears loose. Besides all the antics, the film is still fun to watch, even if it is a little dated. George Burns and Gracie Allen make a quick appearance halfway through the film, which adds to the comedy. And even though Bing's acting overall is a little bit stiff, he's still in total control when singing the wonderful songs written by Sam Coslow and Arthur Johnston, which all became huge hits. Learn to crew If you want to win your heart's desire Sweet melodies of love Taking only four weeks to film and rushed into cinemas, College Humor was a big hit, with the variety stating, Crosby makes his best showing to date, with a chance to handle both like comedy and romance. It's a light, frothy musical that doesn't give the customers much of a mental workout. Bing's pale face makeup is the only flaw, so it looks like all he needs now is a new paint job and another good role. Mr. Danvers, I must ask for your resignation. It's a pleasure. And when you take off that high hat, you'll realize it's guys like Mondrake that keep you in striped pants. What do you think brought the student body to this university? The hope of seeing you win a checker game single-handed? I'm not in the habit, sir. Oh, make mine raspberry. Well, unfortunately, his next film is even more lightweight than College Humor. Too Much Harmony is the name of his next picture in 1933, and it's a dated backstage musical that's really only saved by Crosby and the magnificent songs written once again by Sam Coslow and Arthur Johnston. With a cast that included funny men Jack Oakey, Skeets Gallagher and Harry Green, a wonderful lineup of songs such as Thanks, The Day You Came Along and Black Moonlight, this should have been much better. It's still interesting to watch, but there's not much of a story, and Bing, who seemed so at ease in front of the camera in the big broadcast and his Max Senate shorts, suddenly looked stiff and uncomfortable. Eddie, do you think I ought to sign Chadwick? I think you ought to pick your own leading lady. I know, but if I could only get someone a little younger. Well, I'll let you figure it out, and I'll see you in New York. What do you mean? Aren't you going with us? I'm taking the plane tomorrow. What? Eddie, please! Playing a Broadway star called Eddie Bronson, Bing suddenly finds himself in a small town when the plane he was flying in had to land due to bad weather. Killing some time by watching the vaudeville acts in a local theatre, he notices a girl on stage, played by Judith Allen, who has potential and decides to offer her a chance in his new show. Jack Oakey is the boyfriend, so he and Skids Gallagher decide to go along for the ride. Well, so long, Ed. See you at the train. Oh, yeah. The usual antics occur before Bing and Judith Allen's characters not only fall in love, but make a big hit in the new show. <laughs> My heart went leaping the day you came along Or got my weeping the day you came along Before I knew it, I hummed a little song The day you came along drifted before you came along the fog was lifted because you came along i sent those blackbirds right back where they belong the day you came along. as mentioned when bing is singing he's in total command and amongst the musical highlights is when he sings a song called all the world is singing boo 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 that plays up his own crooning style and is a great follow-up to his previous hit, Learn to Croon. Well, that's not the way it goes, that silly little phrase you hear all day. Dukes and peers and racketeers go boo 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 boo. That's the way they chase their blues away. Come Honolulu Bay to Carolina. 
Philadelphia all the way to Asia Minor. Everyone beneath the sun goes boo 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 Now, the reviews weren't too kind, and it was lucky for Bing that he insisted that he not take star billing. It took him many meetings at the front office to insist and finally convince the heads of Paramount that the other stars should have their names right up alongside of his. Now, this wasn't done because he didn't think the film was any good. He was sincerely humble in this regard and thought the credit should be shared. In fact, it was written in all future film contracts that he would not take top billing, and it remained that way for his entire film career. With the release of Too Much Harmony on September 22, 1933, it's an amazing feat that it became a smash hit in every region of the United States. In New York, it broke the Paramount Theatre's house average and raked in $60,000 in just one week. And overseas, in London at the Plaza Theatre, it did more business than any movie since the advent of sound. It's safe to say that this is solely due to Bing, because never was he in better voice. And thanks for unforgettable night I never can replace And memories that linger like a haunting dream It is better to have loved you dear and lost Than never to have loved at all Yes, it's better for no matter what the cost, I held the world in sway, an emperor for a day. And thanks again for taking me on the road to paradise. We lost our way, but still I must convey my thanks. Well, though it would be another year before he would master the relaxed and casual Crosby film persona, it was time to take a step up. On loan to Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, Bing appeared in what would be his best film of Starring Marion Davies, Going Hollywood was funded by her lover, the media mogul William Randolph Hearst. Ultimately, it cost over $900,000 to make, which made it a money-losing hit when released. Take me where the daisies Cover the country lane We'll make hay while the sun shines We'll make love when it rains. The production of this film epitomized the excesses and glamour of the Hollywood film industry at the time, which was a total contrast to what the rest of the country was experiencing as they suffered one of the worst years of the Depression. Now, besides netting a generous lump sum and a $2,000 weekly bonus, Bing experienced filmmaking at a leisurely pace. Many days, they didn't start until 11 a.m., rehearsed a scene, then broke for lunch, which consisted of fine wines and food, all supported by an onset orchestra playing hits of the day. Around 2.30, they'd stagger back to the set, have their makeup readjusted, while the orchestra continued to play, before finally getting around to shooting a scene. Now, after a few takes, it would be time for the crew to wrap up and call it a day. Never before or after did Bing experience such a relaxed and extravagant attitude to making a film, although this didn't exactly sit well with him all the time. Years later, Marion Davies stated that Bing did get mad with her a few times for making everybody wait around, but for the most part, they had a lot of fun on the set and both had fond memories of working together. Good evening, Palmer Duke. Good evening, Lady Fair. 
How's the chickens in the old backyard, and how's the old gray man? Well, sir, I put them all away. I locked the barn up tight. There's going to be a moon in the old hayfield, and we'll have us a dance tonight. Now, the story is pretty simple, with Bing playing a singing star called Bill Williams. There he is! What do you got to say on the topics of the day? What do you got to say before you go away? Just an echo in the valley. But it brings back sweet memories of you. Marion is a school teacher who hears Bing singing on the radio and decides to run away to Hollywood to meet the man of her dreams. Once there, she captures his attention and the leading role in his new film. Like a troubadour, I'll call. The musical score was written by Arthur Freed and Nacio Herb Brown. In fact, it was Arthur Freed who championed for MGM to borrow Crosby from Paramount as he believed that only Bing could do justice to his new song, Temptation, which was to be used in the score. The song ended up becoming a highlight of the film, as here Bing remembers. I want to tell you there was some pretty dramatic stuff in this picture. One sequence that I recalled, uh, my gal aired me and I wound up in Tijuana in a skid row gin mill, unshaven, looking like an unmade bed and clutching a gourd full of tequila and singing the following to a room full of serapes and sombreros. You came, I was alone, I should have known, you were temptation, you smiled, luring me on, my heart was gone, you were temptation. Raoul Walsh was the director who had as much fun as the cast and would often entertain himself during takes by hitting golf balls into a net, playing poker with the crew or even conducting Marion's on-set orchestra. He was nicknamed Rockaway Raoul and at the rap party at the end of filming, Bing was recorded singing this little song. Rollicking Rockaway Raoul He paints highbrow operas are foul but bimbos and sailors and chippies and such, he gives them that old Raoul Walsh touch. Oh, Travette, oh, Travette, we'll never hear that anymore. And now that we're through, MGM can go screw. Says rollicking rock away round. <laughs> Now, when Louis B. Mayer and the other top executives heard this recording, they reportedly barred Bing and Raoul Walsh from the lot for life. And it wasn't until after Mayer himself had left the studio in 1951 that they were finally allowed to return. Well, upon release, Going Hollywood received good reviews and did strong business at the box office, and its success helped to push Bing onto the list of the top 10 film stars of the year. Now, Bing also appeared in two 20-minute shorts for Paramount in 1933, filmed partly on location in Yosemite National Park. Please and Just an Echo were made in that Max Sennett style with slapstick situations and some really good songs. Every kiss, every hug seems to act just like a drug. You're getting to be a habit with me. Oh, I must have your arm. I'm addicted to your charms. You're getting to be a habit with me. I love you oh so madly. I need your love so badly. But I don't stand a ghost of a chance with you. Tell me that you love me too. 
The following year, 1934, would bring more success and the first Oscar nomination for Best Song. All that and more in the next episode of Bing Crosby, The Hollywood Years. I'm David Duncan. See you then. Every night, my whole life through, your eyes reveal that you have the soul of an angel white as snow. But how long must I play the role of the gloomy so-and-so? Please say you're not intending.